America's Friday, February 17th. And another special guest we have this morning is Mary Louise Rich uh, with the Harvest Hope Food Bank. And she's going to talk about the latest statistics and what's happening with Harvest Hope. Mary Louise, it's great to have you here. And, you know, the Casey Mafia is a, a nonpartisan group. We talk about a number of different issues. It's an eclectic group. And we have a lot of fun, but we also have a lot of serious issues that are presented. So anytime you're coming through South Carolina, Friday, 7 o'clock, every Friday morning, please visit us here at the Casey Mafia. Mary Louise, you want to say anything? Come visit us. It's, it's an interesting conversation and an interesting discussion. Next week, signing off, South Carolina. Steve A couple stats to begin with. Uh, one out of six South Carolinians will go to bed hungry tonight. One out of five children under the age of 17 in this state will go to bed hungry. Uh, for children under the age of five, the number increases to one out of every four. Um, who, do, who do these people look like? They look like your neighbors. They look like the kids that your kids go to school with. Uh, they look like the people that sit next to you in church. Uh, the economy's had some real negative effects on uh, our population. We've seen significant increases over the past few years. Last year, I think we saw a 25% increase in the number of folks that we saw over the previous year. Uh, how do we do this? Uh, and I'm going to, for those, I, I'm like the myth buster. Uh, most people think, oh, you're one of those government, what is it, government entitlement programs. Uh, would you all like to guess where the majority of Harvest Hope's contributions come from? Any small business? Individuals. 41% of our contributions come from people just like you and me. Uh, only 10% of our total budget comes from any type of government funding, federal, state, or local. So we do this um, based on what we can do in the community. A couple pieces of statistics. Good news! I think last time I spoke, we were like number three or four in the nation for unemployment. We're down to number ten. <laughs> Yay. Uh, bad news is uh, in some of the counties that we serve, we serve 20 of the 46 counties, we are still seeing unemployment rates at or above 20%. Poor Marion County, they just can't seem to stay below 20% for any length of time. Uh, I just ran the statistics on the first six months of, of uh, our fiscal year, which ended in December. In the period of Ju July to December, uh, we saw about 373,671 families. And we served about 13.4 13 million pounds of food. Uh, we do this through our emergency pantries. How many of you have seen the pantry on 12th Street? Uh, we also have one on Shop Road. Uh, we have one in Greenville. We have one in Florence. We also work with about 493 community agencies, anything from soup kitchens to, uh, to shelters. Uh, we also have 53 children's feeding programs. We feed about 1,300 children a month. Uh, we do backpack weekend feeding programs. We do after-school feeding programs. We also have senior feeding programs. Steve and I were talking earlier. One of the, the most significant groups that we deal with are senior citizens. Because most people think about you know feeding hungry children. But when you've got seniors who are paying more for gas and are already living on a fixed income, uh, a lot of our seniors are faced with Okay, do I, do I get my insulin this month or do I buy groceries? Now, for any of you that might have diabetes, you know those are not mutually exclusive issues. But we're running into that more and more with our senior population. Um, so we're, we're doing, we started, I think, four new senior programs, four or five senior programs in the last year. Um, we also do mobile pantries uh, because people can't always come to us. Again, the, 
the cost of gas to come in from Batesburg Leesville to the Casey Pantry, you know, when you might have one working car in the family, uh, is prohibitive. So we work with local churches and we set up mobile <coughs> pantries where we will come out and feed about 200 families at a time. Um, next question, where does all this food come from? Uh, we receive grant funding from a variety of sources. We also have never wondered where those birthday cakes and, and all that all that stuff goes from the grocery store that's still perfectly good food, but it just goes away. It comes to us. Um, we are bound by USDA, DHEC, and Feeding America Health Standards, so the food that our clients get are at the same quality, if not better, than you would get at your local grocery store. Um, the new map, the meal gap numbers will be coming out. I'm, I'm, they're coming out actually next week. So it'll be interesting to see how, many, how the, uh, the hunger data changes for the next, uh, for, for the previous year, and to see if the economy is, is recovering. We've, we've been told once the economy starts to recover, it will be another 12 to 18 months before our population starts to decrease. Um, I'm hoping the economy starts to turn around because I don't want to have to go out and see lines uh, down the street uh, during the holidays. And that's part of the reason you haven't seen me is because the holidays are real busy for us. And now it's grant season, so my job gets real busy. Uh, but during the, uh, the three days before Thanksgiving, we saw 6,500 individuals in the Casey and, and Richland emergency pantries. So it, they keep us busy. Uh, I'll be happy to take any questions. Steve, did that give you all work, an update on where? Well, Mr. Gaines had a question about Meals on Wheels. I just wondered, is the, meal, is the Meals on Wheels program that used to be around, I don't know, was it still? Is, it, it that, is. is that under your, your situation? Actually, it's not. Um, the Central Midlands Council of Governments works with senior resources to, to do a lot of those programs. We do partner with some on some aspects, as do, believe it or not, some of the uh, the pet adoption agencies. Because what they were finding out, because I had a com this conversation with somebody who works on Meals and Wheels, they were, they were taking uh, the meals out to the seniors, and if they had pets, they were feeding the pets first. And, and not and not eat it. So they partnered with uh, like Pets Inc. and uh, Palmetto Lifeline to to send out cat food, dog food. So not only could the pet eat, but the, the owner could eat as well. Mayor, Mayor Louise, uh, one I just want to interrupt. Uh, Don Humphreys just came in the office from last week. He sold out of books. And Don, are you charging a dollar today, or is it still a free autograph? Signature is still free. Free signature. Okay. Yeah, 95. All right. All right. Uh, the other thing is, what, what if we're successful as a conservative, if a lot of us are conservatives here, if we're successful in getting the government to shrink, do you think that contributions would increase from the private sector to keep the organization going? It will. Uh, one of the things we're looking at, and I'm going to give that the, the piece of government funding that we do receive, the farm bill is coming up for reauthorization this year. And y'all might think, well, what does that have to do with food banks? Uh, things like the emergency uh, food feeding assistance <coughs> program, the TFAP programs in that bill, uh, this uh, commodity supplemental uh, assistance program, which is the senior feeding bill, uh, money is in there. So there are several pieces of money in that bill. We know that we're going to take some cuts. Everybody knows they're going to take some cuts. We've already started to see that through the Emergency Food and Shelter Program, which is FEMA money that comes to us. So we're already anticipating. It makes it more difficult. The issue we've run into lately is uh, people that used to donate to us are now standing in our lines. Uh, and until the economy begins to recover and these people are put back to work, we're still going to see a... Let me, let me give you an example. We, we may be seeing more contributions from individuals, but they're smaller. Can I ask you, <coughs> can you, uh, even though, just to bring 
recorded for you to give a personal opinion and outside of Harvest Hope about what you foresee coming economically? And let everybody know that maybe it's your personal opinion about Harvest Hope's maybe. I, as, as a government relations person, I do not have an have an, an Although, we'd like to see the lines get, get shorter. We know realistically for, for at least the short term it's going to, to continue. Our, you know, our work's going to be challenging. It always is. I would love for y'all to put us out of business. <laughs> but, but we know that that's not going to happen. For, at least until till people get back on their feet. That was a good answer, Mary Louise. That was a politician. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Let me ask one question. Would y'all rather, rather have donated canned goods or food or money so that you can buy what you need? Because you're there and you see what you need, and if somebody brings in green beans, you may have pallets of green beans. Right. That's, that's an excellent question. Because we are a member of Feeding America, we have the leverage so, to, to get things. Say, for example, here in South Carolina, we have a year-round growing season. So we get more fresh fruits and vegetables than, say, um, Battle Creek, Michigan. But what does Battle Creek, Michigan have that we don't have? Cereal. They have Kellogg's of Battle Cold Creek. Sleep. So what we do is we go through what's called the choice system with Feeding America, and we're able, for the cost of transportation, we, they will have, they, we will bring them uh, any excess that we have and we and believe it or not, we did get a, a load of corn flakes, cocoa puffs, <laughs> and, and syrup. And for our clients, that's a big deal because that's not. I mean, that's a luxury for them. So, one dollar contributed to Harvest Hope can purchase about six pounds of food. Wow! For every dollar. For every dollar, because of the leverage we have with local local uh, vendors, local stores, and through uh, the Feeding America system. <laughs> when you talk about we bought 13 million pounds of food, that doesn't compute to me. I mean, I may be simple. Why don't you just break it down into dinners? That I can relate to. I can't relate to pounds. I don't know how many pounds of food I ate today. <laughs> how many, yeah, how many meals? Uh, actually, a meal is about 1.3 pounds of food. Um, so we have to the first half, the calculations, and this is always off, and this is why we use pounds instead of meals, because not all the agencies we serve serve meals. They, they do food boxes. Typically what a food box will do, it will do uh, ten to, 7 to 10 days worth of food. So when they come to us, and, and it depends on the size of the family. When they come to our emergency food pantry, people are screened for the size of their family, any special health needs. Uh, if they have children in diapers, because we do do diapers. Uh, any seniors, uh, we have senior citizens who rely on us for their depends. Y'all might not think about, you know, when I go to the store, uh, okay, uh, perfect example of this. I go to the store and I'm going to buy shampoo. Okay, I know some of y'all are follically challenged, I understand. Uh, but when you, when, when you go to the store to buy shampoo, what's, what's the biggest decision you have when you buy shampoo? Price and that's right. And what's going to give you that natural sheen? For our clients, they have to make the decision: Do I buy a dozen eggs, which might help feed my family for the week, or do I buy shampoo? So, uh, one of the things we do are like personal hygiene drives, uh, and and I know y'all got these at home. You go to the hotels and you buy the the shampoo. Or, or you get the hotel shampoo and the soaps, and you always take them. Everybody takes them, and you don't know why, but you got like a bag of them. So bring them to us, because our clients appreciate that stuff. One more question, Bill Black. Question, how do you, uh, I guess, evaluate someone who are getting food stamps that still come to you to get free food, and like I know, food stamps are being sold 50 cents on the dollars type thing. What type of evaluation can you do, or certification, or how do you... We actually have people, when they come in, the person who comes in has to present a photo ID and then a Social Security card for every member of their family. They also are assessed for family. You show a Social Security card to each? Uh, for each of the family members that we serve, yes. But not the vote. 
time you come to us, we, we don't believe in sending someone away. So we may serve you, but you will not get federal uh, USDA food subsidies because of the guidelines that are placed on us by USDA. You might get donated food, but not necessarily USDA food. But that gives you 30 days, because you could be served by emergency food pantries every 30 days. All right, let's give Mary Louise a hand, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear another tune, man. <laughs> play Dixie. Dixie, yeah. play Dixie. Dixie. <laughs> Mr. Gaddings. I haven't played in years.